Hello everyone, it's an honor for us to participate in Games User Research Summit and today we're going to tell you how do we survive as a team when we are between agency and in-house research and at the same time we have about 41 dev teams and of course we're trying to communicate with all of them and there's a lot of challenges that we faced because of that. But who are we? Well, here you can see me, I'm Maria, I'm currently working as a head of Game CX Research at My Games, and you can see Katerina, our great senior UX researcher, and her you will see a bit later. And I need to say that My Games is a European entertainment company that develops and publishes uh, games across various genres for PC, console, and mobile devices worldwide. My Games comprises more than 41 in-house development teams releasing games for PC, consoles and mobile devices each year. And what's our plan for today? Well, first we're going to talk about how we started our long journey in popularization of UX research. We faced different problems, challenges, it was kind of a fun journey. And of course we're going to highlight some cases and problems of our this old life. Uh, also, we faced a resistance, of course, it was kind of obvious, and we're going to tell you what we've done with all this resistance. And we're going to sum up uh, with where are we right now and what has changed, so yeah. But first, let's start from the very beginning. So, about five years ago, literally nobody understood what we were doing, why we were doing all these UX things and UX, like, what is it actually? So, yeah, some teams were talking to each other and telling about UX research, uh, but it was quite a rare thing. And in the most cases, a lot of our colleagues thought that UI equal to UX. Well, obviously, it's not the same thing, you know. And Especially when you are a perfectionist, you are going to suffer every day when you can't predict anything. So it was our life, we couldn't predict anything, and as soon as you just sit down, make your cup of coffee or tea and start analyzing results or conducting playtests for one project, another one or two at once suddenly come. And due to lack of knowledge about the extra search, our, our teams didn't know when they need to come and run a research. They were using their intuition and, of course, this affected on us and our processes. The most common request we received was about already released game and bad reten retention, obviously. And we saw that a lot of problems could be solved and fixed before the release. And like all of us, we asked questions to our stakeholders and colleagues about the target audience and we faced uh, with the fact that many didn't understand for whom they were making the game. Like, they are telling us that, hey, I'm making my game like for everyone, for all gamers, and of course it's not a good idea. And some of our colleagues also telling us, were telling us that they do know their target audience. But it was all about TAs, age, gender, or sometimes it was about uh, geography. Nothing about titles, behavior, or anything else, and of course you could understand it's kind of not enough. Less often, but we encountered those who didn't want research at all, well, because they were confident in their knowledge, so they were just telling us, well, I don't need research, I know everything to develop a game, so just... I don't need this. Well, okay. And also we face situation when at the same time two or three teams come to us and all of them wanted research as fast as possible. I should say that it was quite nervous for us. Uh, we don't want to argue or make somebody upset. So in each situation we were talking with each team, trying to find some compromises, but you know, sometimes it was just impossible. So we have to go to our heads or our CEO who would tell us which product or project was more important and beneficial. And well, you know, was it unpleasant for us? Of course, yeah, it was kind of disgusting. We feel so sorry for the team, which was called less important one. And of course, we did understand whether we uh, had conducted the research and researched the target audience before the game development started. We wouldn't have these type of situations. And let's just imagine that here we get our game development cycle from the very beginning. There's phases like concept, reproduction, production, etc. Well, and at the end uh, is release phase. So most often teams came during the release phase or after it. 
much less often they came right before the release and they were talking about the rest of the phases like uh, concept, pre-production, production, etc. Nobody had any idea about doing anything about research at those phases like research? No, I've never heard about it. And I'm going to uh, tell you uh, a few quick uh, cases that we faced. So let's start from the first one. It's the game called Heroes of Ultrant. So what's the game? The core gameplay is much free, but actually there is some more different game mechanics like PvP Arena, you can collect characters, upgrade them by collecting cards, and each of characters has its own stats and abilities, so during the match you need to remember all your and enemy's characters' weaknesses and strengths and use them for your strategy. And uh, target audience was causal gamers, gamers who played games like Candy Crush Saga and similar ones, and our dev team came to us and told us that hey, we got terrible turn rate, about 80% of players are leaving us after the tutorial and we assume the tutorial is hard for them. So, okay, we decided to run playtests. So we got seven participants from Call of Gamers, like they were exactly playing games like Candy Crush Saga, Match 3 and etc. And also uh, because of the game is kind of a mix of different genres because there's Match 3, there are some RPG elements, there's collectible card games elements etc. Also we uh, decided to run uh, our playtest for another seven participants, they were mid-core gamers, they played some Hearthstone, uh, different RPGs like Skyrim, Witcher, etc. And what's our testing scheme? Well, first uh, we conducted a little interview about the previous experience of our participants. Participants played the game, a uh, wisdom moderator was watching the gameplay in another room with that team, and we were tracking participants' side by using eye tracker. And, uh, uh, a survey with uh, my two um, methods which we really appreciate and we're using them it's Microsoft Desirability Toolkit, MTT or Game Experience Questionary, it's GAQ and of course after that we conduct in-depth interview and here is the screenshot of core gameplay you could see here the field with crystals it's the match free field by matching different crystals you make different actions for instance if you match three red hammers then you deal some damage to your enemy but if you match three yellow crystals then uh, you gain some shields and this shield would uh, block your enemies the next ability attack and on the bottom there's force ability which requires mana and the last one is your special or ultimative ability and under your characters you could see their stats and um what we got well here is you could see uh, an eye tracking of participant and we're kind of sorry for low quality but we really wanted to show you this um results with an eye tracking uh, well, it was a nice participant, she was completely absorbed by the core me mechanic, this much free mechanic, but at the same time she wasn't paying attention to health and mana bar, purple crystals for ultimate ability, overall abilities, character stats, well, she's completely ignoring anything else but this much free thing. As a result of our playtest for Kozla Games, the game itself was extremely hard and intense. Their main motivation to play games was just relaxing and having some rest, but this game raised the level of tension. And as I mentioned before, uh, we also had seven mid-core players. And, well, they understood everything about the, ga the game, like the core gameplay of the main thing, the meta part, but it was too boring to play a game with these mechanics, so we get just two different opinions there um, for once for one our uh, target audience, well, it was kind of too hard, too intense, and for another one, it was too boring. So, the game didn't fit for its target audience. It was kind of, well, kind of set to here, but yeah. And um, there were a lot of uh, resources spent to develop the game, and this type of enormous mistake was hard to fix. The dev team tried to fix it, but, well, it was easier to admit the mistakes and learn them and start developing a new game from the very beginning. And, well, obviously the project was closed. But we got another case. Uh, here's the PC game, World of Speed. Uh, it was a vertical slice of our racing game. We got four racing tracks, like 
everyone else at the very beginning we always brief our stakeholders and colleagues to collect all the data about the project and sure we ask questions about the target audience however in this case we got quite weird answers well the team didn't know anything about their ta but it was a relief for us that they wanted to study the audience to test correctly the game further um, they did understand that it's easier to change the game or even stop developing it at that point rather than after the development. So first I need to say that we run eight focus groups with players and then we run a survey. As a result, we divided the whole audience of racing games players well into six segments. First one is hardcore simulator players, like they get different stuff, different devices, so yeah, they're quite hardcore. Second one is atmosphere lovers. Of course, they need to see this beautiful atmospheric movement of the car and how it works. So there should be a beautiful sunset, etc. Uh, the third segment was arcade lovers. For them, it's just the need to fun, like uh, they're often playing some different, well, you know, Mario Kart games. Uh, the fourth one is online players. For them, the crucial part is just online, they need to play with, the, with their friends and actually they don't care about this racing genre. The fifth one, players in a league company. Like, for them, it's crucial to, uh, to play offline with trends uh, and often they play on consoles. And the sixth one, with the last one, it was just the random players who like played the game by accident, just a bit for a few hours and that's all and they're not that in this genre and after that we went into ethnography playtest with hardcore simulator players and atmosphere at first for lovers uh, it was an ethnography playtest and also after that we uh, get another interaction uh, in our lab we test the game and uh, I need to say that we were working in pairs and there are essential discover and focus groups about the devices of players because hardcore simulator players had additional devices for gaming and atmosphere lovers usually had advanced hardware. Also, an interesting finding. All of the participants, almost from each segment besides arcade lovers, were telling us that the key point why we start playing racing games was realism. Uh, this is a crucial thing that we need to Remember, keep this in mind. And here you can see some photos we took during our research. Of course, all our participants gave us their photo consent. And, mm, well, as I've already told you, for the next iteration, we run playtest uh, in the lab and use eye tracking. And here you can see this eye tracking heat map. Uh, well, and I need to say that we faced an interesting situation. Participants from Atmosphere Lovers group, after hitting a pole, for example, uh, hitting a pole on the road, did nothing and they just waited like just they just hit and do nothing and we were like oh, what's happening it was kind of unexpected for us it turns out that they expected that they would automatically be transferred from this accident to the road and they would continue to drive and they do nothing else for that and to be honest well you know actually it didn't sound very realistic at the same time for players of hardcore simulators this was not realistic enough. The car didn't break down as it should be. For some reason it was possible to go further at the same speed as it was driving before. And we were kind of upset doing this fact. And here comes the interesting dilemma. On one hand the game is too realistic, but on the other hand it's not realistic enough. Considering additional problems we faced, uh, some usability problems, uh, some problems with game mechanics, studio understood that game it would be too expensive to work the game and it's easier to st start everything from the new page. And here I want to highlight some pros and cons of our this old life. We really tried our best uh, to try to find some pros, of course. So what's our pros? First of all, uh, we got a really nice high watchfulness for the UX team, this enormous amount of uh, genres is kind of useful for us, for our skills. And of course, ability to work in stressful situation, I assume that actually right now, I of course I don't want to work in this stressful situation, but on the other hand, this is kind of great that I had this experience. 
Also, we uh, gain an ability to run tests in parallel. We mixed methods and tools to conduct our research, but often there were low quality tools. But overall, this is kind of great that we had this experience. And one more thing, only UX team conducted playtests, so we had more opportunities to control fixes and the whole process. And on the one hand, it was kind of a real pros because we can control everything. But on the other hand, uh, we got an amount of colleagues who wanted to run tests by themselves. But what about some cons? First, first of all, is burnout. Well, you know, when you have this chaotic shadowing, uh, chaotic and the sap research, of course, you will burn out. It was just awful. And well, of course, we didn't want to live like this. Dev teams didn't understand the process of research and then they could, uh, could conduct it. So they just, as I've told you, they just came to us like why they're using their intuition. And yeah, of course, due to that, we got this chaotic scheduling. Problems and issues which could have been fixed before the release. If only we had run a test, we saw it and we understand what actually we can fix this. And we got less trust from dev teams to our UX team. And this was one more thing that we really wanted to fix. So what we have done to fix all of this? Well, I need to say that if you start popularizing, uh, popularizing research when you can go with short way where your company's heads or CEO telling everyone that they have to listen to do research, but also there's a long way where you need to show the usefulness of research, gain confidence, show that you really help and reduce spending on resources. We definitely didn't want to go to our heads or CEOs so they will force everyone to start implementing research in development. We wanted to show the usefulness and profits and of research so everyone would come at will. Also, we heard some stories about other companies which uh, force research and we saw some disadvantages. For instance, first of all, everybody hates UX Lab. Uh, the UX Lab turned into a barrier which you as a game developer, have to proceed and beat. Moreover, you have less space. You are thinking about that all your features and idea could not be approved because of UX team. And here comes issue with creativity. And we, as a UX team, wanted to be friends to our colleagues, not a hammer which everyone uh, would hate. So the long way was our choice. And here is our soft path of friendly UX team. Well, we talked about ourselves and UX research. There are a lot of meetings with studios. We were telling about research process and show we need. We were sharing our cases for positive and negative ones. Each team could watch the whole playtest and ask questions if they want to. Everything was up to them. And if someone wanted to conduct research by themselves, just go ahead. We're, we'll be just happy for that. We were tracking our findings and team decisions about fixes and it was an honor for us when uh, Alexander Anin, head of IT Territory Studio, brought an article about our playtest. You can find the link down below here and if you want to read it, of course, it would be really great. And more and more studios found out about us through word of mouth. We were kind of we were happy about this thing and at least we had a solid backlog with tons of research. And at least we started testing hypotheses from the very beginning. The team started saving their resources and it's much more better to spend less effort and close the project than spend a lot of resources, time and money and have no idea whether your decisions are bad or not. But of course, obviously not everyone wanted research, but for different reasons. Some colleagues were sure that they know more, they know better, so it's just a waste of time to make a research. Then you get used to your processes and then somebody has just come to you and want to change everything, for sure you'll be mad. It was quite understandable that some studios didn't want to interfere with uh, the development process. And the most common case it was about that we don't have time or money, so well, yeah. And just a quick reminder, we didn't want to use force and so we didn't do that. And if somebody didn't want to have a research, then okay, it was completely up to them. But of course, we were talking about different cases, both negative and positive one, around those colleagues. Well, you know, just by chance. And we had a lot of our colleagues uh, who saw the profit of UX research. We stick together with them. They also helped us to spread the UX culture and made changes. 
Even if it's just one person from the whole team, it was already enough to start a process of integration of UX research culture. We come with some cases or our ally colleagues was take, talking about research, about some sharing some cases. It was kind of really great for us. And the word of mouth, of course, a team got a nice experience with research. They start talking on different internal meetups about our cases, spreading the information about research and our team more and more. So what did you get? What this looks like like now? I'm going to pass my word to Ekaterina, so she will continue. Maria has told you how our process looked before the changes. But you can see how this process looks now. This is common timeline of game development. UX Lab can join on each stage. Let's talk about it in more details. Teams come to us at any stage of the game's life. This decision gives a possibility to change a game from the beginning and lower the cost of development and employment resources. Why is this happening? People know about the possibility of conducting research. Before, many students didn't know about the inner UX lab in my games and its opportunities. Development teams know about the results of research at each stage of development and are aware of research value. Teams understand how we take research results. Therefore, we are ready to change their game depending on them. They know that uh, there are many methods of conducting research and testing hypotheses, not only playtests. And quite important people understand that they won't be refused with help. Teams book our time in backlog in advance. Not uh, in a few days before the release of new future features, uh, but why is this happening? They know that we work with all studios. Also, they understand that our UX team is a small one and each works in parallel on three or five projects. Uh, for example, in 2021, we conducted 71 micro researches. Teams understand that the preparation for the research takes uh, some time. For example, when we plan playtests, we use a four weeks rule. The first week we meet uh, the team, collect hypotheses and questions, prepare the glide and uh, equipment. It takes two weeks uh, to do playtests and the four weeks is to make the report. But at the same time, there were cases when we carried out this entire process in one week. Don't ask about it. Teams are ready to schedule uh, multiple iteration. They know that solution can be checked repeatedly. There are no limits but uh, common sense. People know about different methods for conducting research and testing hypotheses and how it works. They can give us only concept or hypothesis and we can conduct research on this. They don't need to wait for the finished prototype for research. They come back to us because they understand their research value and they are no longer shy or fearful of researching their games and gain feedback from players. Important thing, we involve the development team in the research process. Research doesn't look like a black box. They know how we conduct researches depending on each method, what can be taken from research and how the information affects their research process. Teams are ready to create hypotheses, questions, and ready to share analytics of their project. They can follow the process of research or run research by themselves if they want to, but we are ready to help them. We invite teams on workshop to analyze the results of their research. Together we define what is a problem and how it can be dealt. But what about the organization moments? Each studio has some specific budget, documents, source, NDA, and in your process. On the slide, uh, you can see some examples. Before the start of research, we find out more details and we ask to help with organizational uh, moments, including the ones on the slide. On this slide, you can see our frequent soft for conducting research. Especially we like Discord because you can organize multi stream from several respondents who play against each other. When we did researches offline, we used uh, iTracken and our equipment in our laboratories. What else do we do for new process in research? Education teams on games UX research from the foundation of UX research and uh, two specific themes of UX writing and accessibility. Uh, also telling teams uh, about UX research in my games and research results. 
working with the market research team to use both quantitative and qualitative methods, especially from science and family playtests. Participate in conferences, internal meetups, and demo days. We are a small team, and each of us has from three to five projects at the same time, but we know each other's projects and are ready to help at any stage. Our new method has both pros and cons. Uh, let me tell you about that a little bit. On the plus side of things, thanks for, to the new methods, we now have uh, access to a great variety of games, genres, platforms and trends, and we are able to work with different teams. All of that uh, makes our work quite interesting. Another thing is this method is not only good for us, but also for the studios. Our research is free for them, and they receive uh, a lot of information because we mixed quantitative and qualitative methods as we work together with our marketing research. On the other hand, there are still some difficulties. For instance, uh, the small team uh, for all uh, the studios and all their projects. Uh, that uh, could uh, cause uh, some problems as communication could vary with each studio and we can't dive deep into development of each game in order to have time for everyone. Another difficult thing is NDA, because of that uh, we have some limits in sharing research results. Now I'd like to share with you some cases or let's say new era of research. The first one is Lost Ark. It is a top-down, massively multiplayer online action role-playing game. We wanted to be a publisher of this game on CIS, but our team decided to check if it was a good idea before the closure of the deal. We conducted focus groups, interviews and survey with our potential players. What we found out was, we segmented auditory on journal and identified it those uh, who were waiting for this game. We found out how we can promote this game on each group. We discovered uh, that our game has an our content uh, for both gamers group. And we found out uh, what are the expectations of the players who have followed the ads about Lost Ark or who have played the Korean version of the game. As a result, we become a publisher of Lost Ark in CIS. Second case is an NDA project, but we can talk about it without specific details. It is an online uh, multiplayer game in specific setting. We wanted to understand the impressions of our potential players about our direction at each important stage in the development game. We have conducted a few duration friends and family playtest on each important stage game development. This playtest was uh, with all players and several stream screen of the game. Also, all players have taken a large post gameplay survey and EX Lab has conducted in depth interview with 10 players. What we found out was, as of today we have conducted three iterations of research, and this is just the beginning. Our first friends and family playtest we started with a prototype with cubes and spheres. The environment uh, don't have texture, uh, the game have, uh, had only general mechanics, uh, we discovered what our potential players think about the concept of the game, uh, mechanics, uh, movement and shooting. Second friends and family playtest, our game had the USB feature, a new customized uh, character's block, texture of the environment. We discovered what our potential players think about new mechanics in game, visuals, sounds, special ability of the hero, and how this version of the game differs from the previous one. Third uh, friends and family playtest, uh, the game had secondary games mechanic. The expanded customized uh, character block with boxes in the shop, texture on characters, improved general mechanics and uh, actions. We discovered what our potential players think about the game at this stage, how they play and uh, what think about improvements of the game. And next case uh, is uh, Pathfinder Wrath Over Ages. Uh, it's um, is a metric role-playing game. We wanted to check the game before releasing it. Especially how does the game compare to Pathfinder Kingmaker and uh, how is the prologue of the game perceived our audience. We conduct this research on the OBT stage for several months before the release of this game. We have chosen uh, diary research for this game. It takes three days to do playtests. On the first and the last days, our respondents 
took a survey, including GAQ and MBT. After that, uh, we met uh, them from the post-gameplay interview. What we found out was, we found some problems on Chargan stage, where people can spend uh, from 10 minutes to 3 hours. We looked uh, at the prologue of this uh, game from the point of view of our players. We discovered what our potential players think about the atmosphere of the game and how it differs from the first part of the game. And we found some problems in the game's interface and fixed them before the re release. Let's look at some situation in this game where we have fixed problem before release. Let me draw your attention to the left picture. On Chargan stage, a player can choose a fit for their character. Our game had hints, like and dislike pictograms, but those were mixed. People could see a dislike at the top of the list, followed by like and a dislike against. It was confusing because players had to spend a lot of time creating optimal Chargian to their characters. If you look at the right picture, you can see how we changed the fits list. Now dislike, uh, so natural fits and likes grouped together. This layout is more convenient for players so who immediately notice all appropriate fits for their character. Next situation. Initially, players' character got down to the underground and uh, reached uh, the stage where they need so to check uh, their skills for first time. Some of the players couldn't find an action item and uh, didn't know how to move on. Let's look uh, at a pile on, of stones in this picture. This item doesn't have a clear contour, hints or other pictograms for action. People didn't understand they needed uh, to interact uh, with that. Some players were running in circle for half an hour before they uh, could uh, perform skill check. But if you look uh, at this picture, you can see that the pile of stones uh, have a pictogram for action. Also, all characters in player's party from groups near this item. Players can't miss such an obvious hint. This fix uh, helped our players cope with uh, such situation. To sum it up, let me give you some tips uh, that you can use to modify your research process. Don't pressure your teams. You don't need to be filtered. You are friends and supports. Think of it like a um, raid party on last boss. Be the ambassador of research and share your expertise with all teams in different forms. And speak about you. Meet first with new teams, participate in inner meetups, demo days, international conference, and etc. Let your team know about you and be proud of you. One of the important life hacks initially enlist support from at least one team who will promote you from the inside. Inner rumors about your results of research eventually will pay off. Be flexible, don't refuse your teams and try to reach an agreement. But don't lie and know your UX lab limits. Don't promise silver bullets for all problems. It uh, will be shatter confidence to UX research. Involve teams in the research process throughout its duration. Give answers to even uh, the most obvious uh, questions. Because so teams can understand how research works and uh, what to expect from it on each stage game development. Important thing, you need to have patience. Sometimes it's not easy. And know that you are doing the right things. Thanks you for your attention.